to adopt the motion. Adopted. Orders of the day. Resume consideration at third reading of Bill C-76, the Elections Modernization Act, and on the amendment of Mrs. Cousy. Debate. The Honorable Member for Sanix Gulf Islands. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm very pleased to rise at debate at this point on Bill C-76, and I, I want to take the occasion to start with a bit of a broad historical sweep, not too much history, just going back to 2014. Because I think it's important for Canadians to know what's being accomplished with this legislation and what remains to be done. It's not perfect, I want to stress that, but I will be voting for it. I'm also gratified that at least uh, some of my amendments were accepted in the committee that studied this bill. But I want to go back to 2014 when the current Member, Honourable Member for Carleton, was the Minister of Democratic Institutions, brought forward a bill in that Parliament labelled Bill C-23 and given the unlikely title, given its content, of the Fair Elections Act. Mm -hmm. I was, as a member of the opposition here at the time, leader of the Green Party, but I struggled with other members of the opposition, uh, New Democrats and Liberals, in trying to stop this piece of legislation because it clearly had less to do with fairness than with trying to create favorable conditions for the government party at that time, the Conservatives, going in to the 2015 election. So it's with a great deal of irony mm -hmm. that I've heard the number of times that Conservative members in this place have said, oh, the Liberals are just trying to uh, change the terms to make it better for them. Well, c'est vraiment important de souvenir les circonstances de 2014 quand le député de Carlton a mis sur pied ce projet de loi que maintenant et uh, j'espère que ce sera relevé par les changements dans C-76. So going back to what the so-called Fair Elections Act did, it was consumed, as some members of this place still are, with the fiction, and I want to underscore the word fiction. C'est pas vrai, c'est pas un peu, pas de tout. Je veux souligner que nous n'avons pas un problème au Canada avec fraude dans nos élections. We do not have a problem of people disguising themselves, taking voter cards, any number of things that have been hinted at in this chamber over the last debate over C-76. Mm -hmm. We do not have a problem of Canadians voting more than once under assumed identities. We have a problem of Canadians voting less than once. That is a serious problem. And that's why we needed the things that the so-called Fair Elections Act got rid of. Things like being able to vouch for someone. Things like being able to provide your voter card as a piece of ID when you went to the polls. Now, none of this would have been necessary if it wasn't for changes that the former Harper Conservatives had made back at the very beginning of their first mandate, where for the first time they made it a requirement that Canadians produce a piece of government-issued photo ID in order to be able to vote. Mm -hmm. Again, hinting darkly at the idea that people are voting more than once because we don't have enough checks on this problem, which is a non-existent problem, does not exist, never has existed. This has been the evidence from several chief electoral officers, uh, both Mark Mayer and Jean-Pierre Kingsley, who both testified to the Prop Committee, this was a, a non-problem. But C-23 did a few other things. It took away some of the abilities of our chief electoral officers to speak to us as voters when we needed information. Mm -hmm. One of those critical moments was in, for instance, the election in 2011. The chief electoral officer sent out a press release, got on the phone, got on the radio. Guess what? Remember? Robocalls were going on. Mm -hmm. Canadians were being misdirected being told that their polling stations had changed. None of this was true. We had an investigation. I don't think it was ever adequately investigated. We know it took place, but we don't know who'd done it. That's a mystery that remains unsolved, but I think we know there was a gun lying on the floor. It was smoking, and several people standing around appeared to have used it, but we have no conclusion as to why it was that voters who did not intend, this we know this for sure, voters who did not intend to vote conservative were being told to go to polling stations that didn't exist. Now, the chief electoral officer's powers in that moment to get on the radio and say, if you get a message on the phone that, pre that tells you it's Elections Canada on the line and your polling station has changed, ignore it. We have not changed any polling stations. That was important. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. What C-23 did in 2014 was take away the ability of the Chief Electoral Officer to do exactly that. Took away the ability of the Chief Electoral Officer to reassure Canadians that their polling stations hadn't changed. There were a number of other things that, that the so-called Fair Elections Act did. One was to say that if you had a particularly long writ period, you had more spending permitted, which meant that the really big parties, like, say, the Conservatives or the Liberals, but to the advantage in that election, certainly of the Conservatives, you, spent, you could spend more money if the writ period was longer. So, boy, they spent a lot of money. In that election, they spent uh, just shy of $42 million, oh. and the people of Canada gave them half back because of the way the so-called Fair Elections Act had operated in their to their benefit. So moving quickly, we had two pieces of legislation tabled in this 42nd Parliament, and it was the first one that dealt primarily with fixing all the things that had gone wrong or that were perverse under Bill C-23 in the 41st Parliament. In December 2016, we got Bill C-33. I was thrilled to see it, but it never got to second reading, and virtually everything, well, everything in C-33 got added in to C-76, which emerged this year. So let me just go through those things, that the original C-33, and it's before us now is Bill C-76, and it's great. Gave the Chief Electoral Officer back the powers to warn people, talk to Canadians, and educate people in a nonpartisan fashion. Got rid of this extended period in which you could get more money out of the whole system. That's in C-76. It actually shortens up the period and restricts how much money big parties can spend, which means the taxpayers reimburse them less at the end which is great. It brought back, and this is in the, the first part of this bill, C-33, that's now come forward as C-76, got brought back the basics that you're allowed to bring someone with you to the polls that says, I know Joe, he's my brother-in-law, we live in the same neighborhood, but he's missing a driver's license because his driver's license has been taken away from him. I'm here to vouch for him. Or for students voting at university. Very difficult time for students to prove where they live, that they have the right to vote. Far too many people were denied their constitutionally enshrined right to vote in 2015. The Conservatives say, well, look, voter turnout went up. Sure it did. Voters were desperate to get rid of Stephen Harper, and they showed up in larger droves. But the reality is that hundreds of thousands of Canadians were denied the right to vote because of the vestiges, because of the, the changes to the Elections Act that we're now getting rid of. Also really good and entirely new is the concept that the Chief Electoral Officer of Elections Canada can go into schools and try to encourage 14-year-olds to register to vote for when they turn 18. And they can start right away getting themselves, knowing how they're going to, knowing that they are registered so they can begin to think about their civic duty to vote. The lack of voter turnout among our youngest citizens is a real problem. I would love to see us reduce the voting age to 16. That's not in this bill, but a good first step is that Elections Canada can get into the schools, talk to the young people when they have that context of high school. Their civics education will feel far more real when they are personally registering to vote. Not that they have the right to vote, but they're pre-registered for when they turn 18 and do have the right to vote. Now, C-76 does a number of other things that uh, are, I don't think we're ever going to be doing enough to deal with the threats of social media, the ways in which things like Cambridge Analytica, the way that Facebook information can be mined, the way that Facebook ads can be targeted using fake news. The C-76 attempts to deal with this. I think we're going to have to come back with it, to it and do more. They certainly support what they've done in this bill. I certainly support that we have pre-writ period election spending limits. This was a big vacuum in our laws, and I think it's because last time we looked at the Elections Act, no political party was spending money pre-writ. They kept their money and started spending it after the writ fell. It wasn't until Stephen Harper's attacks on Stéphane Dion in January of, uh, what was it, 20, 2007, we started having attack ads outside a writ period with no spending controls at all. Now we have spending controls. Mm -hmm. What's missing? Here's the big gap. This was our opportunity to put political parties under privacy laws. This legislation says that political parties must develop privacy policies and table them. But that's a far cry. It's a voluntary scheme. We need to put political parties under our privacy laws. Back when C-23 was going through the House in 2014, 
I did try and clause by clause to get in an amendment that political parties were subject to the Privacy Act. Nobody, no party supported that then. But I really want to thank the Democratic Party for supporting my amendment, which did not succeed, to set out that parties must adhere to the Personal Information Protection and Electronic Documents Act, PEPITA. We did not succeed, but I thank the NDP for being with me on that. We need to keep working for fair elections in Canada. C-76 gets us a long way towards them. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Question.